So everybody, it looks like we were right and we got the new M2 Pro and M2 Max chip, but Apple actually included a little bit more than just MacBook Pros. They gave us the Mac Mini, and I think, in my opinion, the Mac Mini is the star of the show. But in this video, let's go over everything that Apple released, all the specs, the price points, and then what we think moving forward with these new computers. Let's get into it. So just like we thought, Apple, with a press release in their newsroom, announced the new M2 Pro and M2 Max chips alongside three new pieces of hardware. I know the hardware looks exactly the same, and that's because it is. The design did not change at all. But we did get the new MacBook Pros that we mentioned, so we saw the 14-inch and the 16-inch variant. But then we also finally got an update to the Mac Mini, which is something that a lot of people have been yearning for ever since the original Mac Mini with the M1 release, when it first released when the M1 transition began. The M1 Mac Mini, alongside the M1 MacBook Air, was the first computer that got the M1 chip in their actual system, and that's what started the whole transition from Intel to M1. But first, let's quickly talk about each one of these chips, the M2 Pro and then the M2 Max, and kind of talk about all the improvements that you will be seeing and all the marketing terms that Apple threw at us. So starting with the M2 Pro, the M2 Pro will be available on both the 14 and the 16 inch variant, and it is technically the baseline version of the M series chip on the MacBook Pro. So you will be getting up to 20% faster CPU and up to 30% faster GPU, which we kind of guessed that I said about 15 and 25 respectively in the last video. We will be getting an industry leading performance per watt. So we know that the M series chip is a very power efficient system and Apple again is touting that it is going to continue like that. The M2 Pro will allow for up to 32 gigs of internal memory, which is great to have, over 40 billion transistors, a 40% faster neural engine because of that. We're still dealing with a five nanometer technology. We didn't move over to four or three quite yet. This is their second generation of that five nanometer transistor. So keep that in mind for maybe the next iteration, it should be a three nanometer or four nanometer process. And all that really means in the grand scheme of things is that they're able to fit more because the actual unit of size of those transistors is a little bit smaller. And that's what the nanometer is. It is the unit of measure. So in the same surface area where you fit five nanometer transistors, you're now able to fit four or three nanometer transistors, giving you more at the same surface area. And then you do get a 12 core CPU and up to a 19 core GPU. And now keep in mind, these are laptops. These are going into laptops for the most part. They are going into laptops, so that's great to see. And then we have the actual M2 Max. This is the big boy. This is not quite the M2 Ultra because the M2 Ultra will probably come out with the Mac Pro or whatever they're gonna call it. Maybe they're gonna call it the M2 Extreme, something even more so. But this one, same idea. Up to 20% faster CPU, 30% faster GPU. The biggest difference here is the number of transistors. So 67 billion transistors because they actually have a larger surface area with the M2 Max. And then another big difference here is up to 96 gig of internal memory on these chipsets. So again, if you're working with a lot of applications at the same time, you're rendering stuff in real time, you're working with a lot of immediate stuff on your desktop or on your computer, then maybe the 96 gigs of internal memory is something that you need. I'm somebody that with 16 gigs is more than enough for me. I could probably get away with eight gigs of memory still in 2023, but 96 gigs of memory are for those people that are really pushing the limits of that M2 Max. And with that comes the ability of being able to upgrade this to up to a 38 core GPU, which is insane. It's such a small form factor in such a small footprint. And then you do get up to 400 gigs of memory bandwidth internally. So those are the, just the chipsets, right? That's exactly what you're going to get on the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pro, starting with the M2 Pro and then moving on up to the M2 Max. And now let's talk about what actual hardware those chips are gonna go into. So let's start off with the MacBook Pros. What you get with the MacBook Pros in terms of all the updates, again, the design is gonna be exactly the same. The colorways are gonna be exactly the same. So you probably won't be able to tell the difference between an M2 Pro and an M1 Pro MacBook Pro because you're not gonna be able to at all. They still have the same mini LED display, which is world-class, it's great battery life. But some of the things that were improved that were welcome additions, like I mentioned earlier, Apple with their first iteration of the MacBook Pro had an HDMI 2.0 port on there, which was not even the latest and greatest at that time. I don't know why they skimped out on it, but now we do get an improved HDMI port that can push up to 8K footage, which is great to have, because I bet you these machines, the people that are working on this, will be actually editing in that 8K footage. You can support up to four external displays. Like we mentioned also, you get up to 96 gigs of RAM with the M2 Max. You do get up to six times faster effects rendering than the fastest Intel-based MacBook Pro. So kind of a weird way to portray that and market that. There's, they're still comparing the MacBook Pro to the Intel versions of the MacBook Pros, which came about about two years ago. I do wish they compared it to the M1 Pro and the M1 Max because 
those improvements are probably going to be maybe 1.5x as much in terms of rendering speeds and things like that. But if you are coming from a Intel-based MacBook Pro, which most of you should be, if you are coming from an Intel-based MacBook Pro, then this update makes sense, unless you are that person that's taking it to the 10th degree of that M1 Max on your previous MacBook Pro. But that's probably why they marketed it that way, because they think most people coming to this laptop are still coming from an Intel-based MacBook Pro. And then they do mention that they will be get up to 22 hours of battery life on this machine, which is gonna be great. Obviously, this is probably gonna be in Apple's little silo with Apple-based applications, not really third-party applications. You're not really using Final Cut Pro and rendering for 22 hours straight. It's probably gonna be some lighter tasks, but you will be able to get 22 hours of battery life, especially if all you're doing is emailing, going on Slack, maybe watching a YouTube video, staying in Safari, things of that nature. And then lastly, one new improvement is that now you can go up to eight terabytes of internal storage, which I believe last year we did four terabytes. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I believe last year we got up to four terabytes. Now this year we can do up to eight terabytes. And again, you can have up to four external displays powered just with this MacBook Pro. But that is what you're getting from a hardware spec and also the internal SOC with the M2 Pro and the M2 Max. And then lastly, for these MacBook Pros, they do start at $19.99 for the 14-inch variant, which again, stayed the same price as it was last year, which is great to see. Normally, we did have like record inflation, so people thought maybe it would start at $21.99 or $22.99, but it still starts at $2,000. And then the 16-inch MacBook Pro starts at $24.99 for the base version of that one, both with M1 Pros respectively. But now, if you do wanna go crazy, you can actually spec out the 16-inch MacBook Pro with 96 gigs of internal memory, with the M2 Max, 38 core GPU, eight terabytes of storage, that'll cost you about $6,500. So you can go crazy, you can spec it out as much as you want. If you are in this world, I would probably recommend upgrading it, especially if you are on a 16 inch version, go with the M1 Max if you're already there. But overall, the pricing from baseline model, which will be good enough for a lot of people, is $19.99 and then $24.99 for the 14 inch and the 16 inch. And now let's talk about what I think stole the show, which is the Mac Mini. So from a hardware standpoint, it looks like it's exactly the same. No differences, the color is exactly the same, the size is the same, the weight is the same, but what's inside of it does change. And honestly, and it's not even what it can do and all the specs that it's gonna kind of wow you with, but it's the price and the accessibility from a price point factor that's really, really impressive. So. If First off, let's go over all the hardware bits. So you do get Wi-Fi 6E, which also comes on the MacBook Pros, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, which is nice to have, which means up to 2x faster Wi-Fi speeds from Wi-Fi 6. But again, you do need a Wi-Fi 6E enabled router in order for that to take place. You have a 10 gigabyte ethernet option built in. The baseline version is still one gigabyte ethernet, which is more than enough for most people, but there is a 10 gigabyte option. You get Bluetooth 5.3. And then not only do you get the ability to use the M2 processor, which is in the M2 MacBook Air and the M2 MacBook Pro, the non revamped version, you can actually put the M2 Pro chip in this one, which is the first for the Mac Mini. The Mac Mini only had the M1 chip on it before, but now you can actually put the M2 or the M2 Pro if you need something with a little bit more beef in there. And it's interesting, Apple still compares this kind of differently, so they say it's up to 5x faster than the best-selling Windows desktop, and then the M2 Pro model is up to 14 times faster than the fastest Intel-based Mac Mini. So that's always good to see because most people will be coming from an Intel-based computer over to this Mac Mini. Most people coming from the M1 Mac Mini will have no real reason to jump to the M2 Mac Mini unless you need the M2 Pro for some reason. But again, that's how Apple's marketing it. Another nice improvement is that it comes with up to three different displays. So before, you can only actually output to up to two different displays. Now Apple's adding the ability to output to up to three different displays, which is great, the more the merrier. And they also included that 8K HDMI capability in the Mac Mini. You also get up to 32 gigs of unified memory, and you can spec this out to up to eight terabytes of storage built in. Now, I'm one of those people that thinks getting an external SSD is probably more cost efficient than getting the internal storage, but there is something to say about the speed of having the storage built into the device and it being readily there and not having to plug anything in and not having to actually rely on speeds of an external SSD. So to each their own, there are their pros and their cons, much more cost effective to go with an external SSD, but probably a little bit faster and a little bit more convenient with built-in storage. And now let's talk about the price of this Mac Mini, which I think is the best feature by far. So retail price of the baseline M2 Mac Mini is $599, which means when Apple released their M1 Mac Mini, that was $699. So it's $100 cheaper three years later with an improved chipset, improved hardware overall, and improved capabilities, which is absolutely out of this world in my opinion. And then for the M2 Pro version, it starts at $1299, so a little bit more cost prohibitive, but you do get a lot more power out of it. And a little tip that I give to a lot of people is go through the education store. The education store takes $100 off of the Mac mini or $100 off any computer or anywhere from $100 to $200 off of any computer. So 
if you are a student and you want to get a Mac mini, you can get the Mac mini for $499 brand new with the baseline version. And that gives you eight gigs of unified memory, 256 gigs of storage, the eight core GPU, the eight core CPU and the 10 core GPU. And then you can also actually spec this thing out kind of crazily and kind of to compete with the Mac Studio a little bit. So you can go with the M2 Pro, you can go with 32 gigs of unified memory, eight terabytes of storage and SSD, the 10 gigabit ethernet connector, which will get you all the way to $4,500 with a Mac mini, which is pretty expensive. But again, think about it, $500 for a student to pick up a Mac mini. In my opinion, that opens up a lot of doors for schools to supply these, a lot of doors for people to be able to buy them that probably didn't think they could buy it before and get them into the Apple ecosystem for a much cheaper price. I'm gonna be making a video of a budget series with this Mac mini, so definitely stay subscribed because I think it's going to wow a lot of people. Even though it is only eight gigs of memory, that's more than enough for your average student that's just kind of working in Excel, working in Google Docs, going through email, going to Slack, Microsoft Teams, like the little everyday tasks that aren't gonna kind of ruin the engine of the actual Mac mini versus if you are kind of rendering in 8K, you're probably better off getting something a little bit more beefy or a little bit more RAM, but the baseline Mac mini at $500 from the EDU store is absolutely insane. And leave some comments down below what you guys think about that price point. But that is gonna do it, everybody. I wanted to recap, pretty much give you an idea of what the hardware looked like, what the new chipset is gonna bring you, and also all the price points and variations that you can get of these new three pieces of hardware. Overall, from a visual standpoint, they look exactly the same. You will never be able to tell the difference. So if you're sitting next to a person at the coffee shop, you'll get no actual extra cloud or anything like that. But overall, they are welcome upgrades. And like I said, they're incremental upgrades and they're for people that aren't already on the M1. They're for people still on the Intel-based Macs or coming from a completely different ecosystem. And that is just my two cents in my opinion. And again, the star of the show has to be that $599 Mac mini. Just the, the price point itself is by far the best feature. But that's gonna do it, everybody. If you did enjoy, if you learned something new, leave a little comment down below and leave a little dolphin so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys wanna watch some more iPadOS, macOS, or iOS videos, click on these right here. We do have something special coming out real soon and definitely stay subscribed because we are ordering a bunch of these to test out and let you guys know how they perform in real life. But that's gonna do it. I'm Fernando and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.